Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm a former Boeing 737 pilot and welcome to today's video. Just having a little bit of fun and flying the 737 straight into a hell of crosswind. So let's go ahead and have a look into what type of weather we are currently looking into. So we're on a base to runway 28 right, to it left here in Dublin. And looking down here, the weather is 2 to 0 at 28, gust 50. Now, gust 50 means that if we take the full gust and calculate the crosswind component, we're going to end up with about 43 knots of crosswind. Yes, that's about 10 knots above the limit of the 737, but we had to have some fun today, aren't we? So, let's go ahead and do just that. I'm going to turn final over here. We'll also start reducing our speed so that we have some time to get ourselves established on the final approach to Dublin's 2A left over here. Now obviously in the real world we would not be landing on these conditions. If something like that happened to us in the real world, we'd simply go ahead and divert the aircraft if the crossing runway in Dublin would not be open. That one is of course always an option in the real world. Now for the purpose of the simulator, what are we going to expect then? As I mentioned in my uh, recent video, the realistic turbulence from Flight Simulator 2024 has really seen some improvement with the sim update for release. So I'm actually pretty happy with the way that this feels right now. In other words, if this is going to behave realistically, then it's going to give us an absolute nightmare. Now the 737 has some interesting crosswind handling. First of all, we got two flap settings to choose from for our arrival, and flap 30 is the only choice that you can reasonably make over here. The reason for this is that flap 30 gives you quite a bit of extra margin on the top of the uh, speed band to the overspeed, and that's basically what we're looking for by selecting that flap setting. Also, flap 40 gives you quite a bit more drag, which means that if a gust hits you and the speed goes down, it will be more difficult to regain the lost airspeed. And those are the two primary factors driving us to the decision to use flaps 30 for today's landing. Now another benefit here is that flaps 30 is going to give us an increased energy state, so the airplane will not be as susceptible to gusts as it would be otherwise. Now, Let's have a look out of the window. Currently, 75 knots crosswind. We have a crap angle of about 20 degrees. The runway is right over there. And we are aligned with the runway track. So this is literally where we are going over there. Now, that promises to become some fun. On top of that, we do have a little bit of precipitation here. We do have glass low capture now, so go around altitude 3000 is set. We're going to fly this by SOP, which means since we're in VMC, technically we are going to extend the landing gear at 4 nautical miles. However, in conditions like these, you definitely do want to get a little bit more control of the aircraft. And I wouldn't be surprised that once we're over land, once there is going to be all the mechanical turbulence of the wind going over all the obstacles on the ground, the autopilot might just pop off because it can't handle this. I would absolutely not be surprised if that happens, but we are going to find out. So, as for the landing itself, the greatest threat is not the crap angle or anything that we are going to have, but the greatest threat to the landing is going to be the fact that we have to decrap the aircraft and align it with the runway center line without getting blown off the runway. So as soon as we take the nose to the right to align it with the center line, obviously the wind will have a huge push on our plane to push us to the right and we have to counter that using some bank angle into the wind. The only problem with that is that we can only give it so much bang before the engine nacelle would actually touch the ground and that happens at 8 degrees of bank angle upon touchdown. So being 10 knots above the transfer limit, this might turn out to be interesting. But let's find out. So let's go flaps 30. We are obviously going to set the speed bug at VRF plus uh, 15, so that is at 157 knots, like this. And then we can take manual control here of our throttles, and we can also disengage the autopilot after quickly reading the uh, landing checklist. 
the start switch is continuous, recall track, speed brake is on green light, landing it down, three green, auto brake three set, and the flaps 30, 30, green light, landing lights on, landing checklist completed, the crew should be seated long ago, and we're clear to land. Alright, so first challenge, let's actually try and see that runway in first place. As you can see, that crosswind over here makes it rather difficult to actually see the runway because of the strut in between our front windows. Now, that shall not be too much of a problem though. The next problem that we might run into as soon as the gusts start kicking in is maintaining a stabilized approach. And you can see what I'm talking about here. So, full control inputs, our plane starts having a couple of problems. So what we would normally do in the real world is to keep the speed between the speed bug and the RAF. Now, the book tells you to keep it right at VRAF plus 15, but when you do that you will regularly exceed VRAF plus 20, which technically puts you into an unstable approach, which we will of course attempt not to do. So keep the speed somewhere over here that's normally working rather well. well as you can see I need quite a lot of aileron input already when going through the gusts. But right now it's rather stable. Well, that actually doesn't look too bad. We got the minimums here, continue. So just 30 knots right now. We might be hitting a good point in time, but 50, 40, 30. All right, let's decrap. And don't hold it off for too long. Fly it down. Here we go. Okay, speed break up. Thrust is normal. A little bit of aileron here to keep the wings level. The slower we get, the fewer aileron we are going to need. All right. And here we're in Dublin. So that was one pretty strong gust that hit us on approach there, where we actually needed almost full control input to keep the airplane under control. Upon landing we were lucky, we only had 30 knots of uh, wind from the left, but we picked a time where there were rather little gusts. Something like that can absolutely happen. So this was actually, technically speaking, a legal landing, since the tower would have updated us with the wind if this would have been a real flight and they would have told us that at the moment we passed the threshold and until we touched down the wind was actually stable and as long as that is the case you could legally technically have landed even though from a practical point of view we would of course have diverted quite a bit earlier but that would have been a different story in any case i do hope you guys found this one interesting be sure to leave your comments underneath the video as always, like, comment and subscribe, and if you really love what I'm doing on this channel, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all again on the next one.